So the CEO of Microsoft just gave a 30 minute speech in which he detailed many different things that honestly are going to shake up the entire industry because we literally didn't expect these just yet. With tons of different AI rollouts from Google and other companies, Microsoft literally just hit back after Google's IO conference by stating that there are many integrations coming now with ChatGPT and with Microsoft's core services such as Copilot that are going to change the game. In this video, we're going to outline every single major update showing you how this is going to impact the entire industry and why this was such a critical announcement. So one of the first things that we're talking about is how they actually managed to essentially bring Bing into ChatGPT. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you this small clip and then I'm going to explain it further as to why this is a complete game changer and exactly why Microsoft did a sneaky tactic to go ahead and do this as quickly as they did. To announce that we're going to bring Chat, GPT, and Bing together as with the default search experience to give you higher quality answers and more timely answers. Let's take a look. Here I am in ChatGPT, and as you can see now, Bing is the default. And when I come in and select it, I can now ask sort of real-time queries. For example, let's ask what I should expect to hear from, about Build and .NET. And what you can see is the results now are more up-to-date. They include fresh content, and they include citations. In fact, if you can see the links on that page there, you can click those and those will take you straight to a web page that's sourced by Bing. So that was actually pretty crazy, but here's what's interesting, okay? So a couple of days ago, OpenAI actually tweeted that we are going to be rolling out plugins along with browsing. Now, for those of you who didn't see the video, I did a video on this recently and it was really, really well done in terms of showcasing how this actually compares to Bard. Now, what was interesting about this is that only today or yesterday, a couple of days later, they decide to release a major update to browsing to include it with Bing. And the thing that makes me understand exactly what Microsoft is trying to do is that they've rolled this out very, very quickly. You see, in the recent browsing examples, what users were actually seeing was that Bard is actually much better than the standard version that we have access to right now. But since they've decided to supercharge ChatGPT now with this extra Bing feature, it looks like ChatGPT is going to be on top right again. And honestly, this is a very, very small change, but many people wouldn't have noticed this because trust me when I say, over time, people would have slowly started to use Bard because that internet feature was going to be a key player. So that was something that made me realize just how quickly these companies are moving when it comes to staying on top of the AI race. Now, let's take a look at the other addition to Bing, which is really interesting. Also excited to announce that we're going to bring interoperability between uh, ChatGPT and Bing for plugins. So you write them once and they're going to run everywhere. So as you can see here in ChatGPT, I've got Zillow and Instacart enabled, but I want to show them to you here in Bing Chat. So we'll flip over and you can see again, I've got the same plugins now in both Bing Chat and in ChatGPT. And what we're going to show you now is I'll do a search here for houses in Chicago and I can ask for a set of criteria, learn a little bit about the neighborhoods. Uh, and now I can automatically call Zillow by saying, hey, give me three houses in a certain price range that meet my criteria. And what you can see is now I get these great options and I'm also going to get all of the other great things you get with Bing, like helpful city guides and maps and prompts. Right there, you can see that this is literally a direct aim take at Google's Bard because this was essentially what Bard was great at. I mean, in the Bard demo, they actually showcased where Bard could literally pull data from the internet, put it into different tables. And of course, as we all know, Bard recently did announce that they were enabling many different plugins. Now, of course, why this is so crazy is that these plugins work on both ChatGPT and they work on Bing's browser. So we know we know that this is pretty crazy in terms of the seamless nature of this because you're literally going to be able to use it on ChatGPT, then switch over to Bing. And of course, as we know, Bing is a more lightweight version. As you're browsing, you're gonna to wanna to be asking questions, whereas ChatGPT is more of, I guess you could say, a user answer question-based focused one, which is, I guess you could say, more information-based rather than search up-to-date based. So either way, this is a real shot at Google because honestly, what everyone thought, okay, Google is on top again, Microsoft literally just managed to take the lead within only a couple of days, which shows once again how fierce this race really is. And notice Bing can read the context of the web page, understand those ingredients, put them into chat, and then I can say, hey, give me a shopping list for this. And it'll automatically call the Instacart plugin, take those ingredients that are right off the page and put them into an Instacart shopping, 
and with one click, I can get those now delivered to my house. This is an incredible productivity benefit for people. So yeah, although Bard did announce many decent functions such as its multimodal capability, which of course hasn't been released yet, this is something that we just haven't seen from Bard. I mean, honestly, this is a seamless integration between apps and the ease of use of this is going to be outstanding. And what's crazier is that OpenAI, as we know, are going to be rolling this out very, very soon. We, we know that ever since Google has stepped up to the plate, that OpenAI is rolling out their features faster and faster and faster, which is of course better for us, but as we know, it's not great in terms of safety. But later on in this event, they do talk about safety and some of the risks and how they're managing to keep that in check. This next announcement was honestly quite interesting because this actually steers into the competition arena where we noticed many trending products that were related to the auto GPT. So essentially what we have right here is Windows Copilot. So it's essentially an AI powered assistant for your entire computer that is integrated into all of Windows. So you can see right here that you have this little chat bar that is actually quite similar to Bing's browser feature where you can literally just talk with it. And I think this is gonna become a lot more useful because a lot of the times people don't exactly know all the commands and functions that computers do have to offer. So here you can see that you're able to work with your documents to find all the relevant files and to analyze every single thing in or related to that specific document. So you can actually work with a lot faster documents and I guess a lot more different applications that is gonna let you work more efficiently. So this is definitely something that I do think is pretty interesting considering that Microsoft were a bit hesitant to release ChatGPT into many different applications at the start. But now, like we said before, they're seeming to roll it out into more and more areas and provide many different integrations that we didn't think we'd see for some time. And this was something that I didn't think that we would see just yet as the AI to be able to essentially efficiently and accurately help you with your computer would seem that it would take a lot more of fine tuning but it seems like they've managed to get this all sorted out and with Windows 11 we have this new software. Then we had a new area that was essentially tailored for AI applications and programs so right here you can see that this area is going to be where Microsoft hosts any new AI programs that people are going to be trying and that people are going to engage in. So essentially what they're trying to do is create this AI hub where people can literally try out many new different programs and essentially have that giant ecosystem where people find those new AI programs that are essentially bouncing from one another. As you know, many different AI programs do come about every single day. Many companies are racing to release their tool and this is going to be a place where developers can share their new products with Microsoft and easily integrate them into the platform. So this is definitely gonna be something that I'm looking forward to because likely this is where people are going to be finding the most used tools and of course being able to download them quickly and safely. Of course, we had Microsoft announce Azure AI Studio, which is essentially a platform that allows people to develop and train their own custom ChatGPT models using OpenAI's infrastructure. And why this is so good is because that it does actually focus on AI safety. So it definitely actually adds that security element so that we know people aren't going to be building some crazy applications that simply run wild. So take a look at this short clip that explains it in more detail. Full life cycle tool chain for you to be able to build your intelligent AI apps uh, and your co-pilots. Everything from being able to train your own models uh, to be able to then ground, whether it's open AI or any open source model uh, with data of, that you bring, built-in uh, vector indexing in Azure Search, uh, built-in support for RAG or retrieval augmented generation support, um, a built-in support for prompt engineering with prompt flow and orchestration, uh, and of course, built-in support for perhaps the most important feature, which is AI safety. One of the things that we've been hard at work is to build into the tool chain AI safety. It's, it's we, we've been at work. So let me know what you thought about this new AI announcement. Are you still going to be using OpenAI's ChatGPT and Microsoft's Bing, or are you still going to be using Bard, provided they both have new features?